Hello, I am Miss Ginger of Greenhouse Preschool, and today I'll be reading one of my spring and gardening favorites, Mrs. Rumphius, Story and Pictures by Barbara Cooney. The Lupin Lady lives in a small house overlooking the sea. In between the rocks and around her house grow blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. The Lupin Lady is little and old, but she has not always been like that. I know, because she is my great aunt, and she told me so. Once upon a time, she was a little girl like me, named Alice, and she lived in a big brick house in the city. She could see the waves and the wharfs and the bristling masts of tall ships. Many years ago, she had come over with her grandfather to America on a large sailing ship. Now her grandfather worked at the bottom of the house, making figureheads for the prows of ships and carving figures out of wood to put in front of the stores. For Alice's grandfather was an artist. He painted pictures too, of sailing ships and places across the sea. And when he was very busy, he let little Alice help paint in the skies. In the evening, Alice sat on her grandfather's knee and listened to his stories of faraway places. And when he would finish, Alice would say, Grandpa, when I grow up, I too will go to faraway places. And when I grow old, I too will live by the sea. Well, that is all very well, little Alice, said her grandfather. But there is a third thing you must do. What's that? asked Alice. You must do something to make the world more beautiful, said her grandfather. Oh, all right, said Alice. But she didn't know what that would be yet. In the meantime, Alice got up and washed her face and ate porridge for breakfast, and she went to school and she came home and did her homework, and pretty soon she was all grown up. Then my great aunt Alice set out to do the three things she had told her grandfather she was going to do. First, she left home and went to live in another city, far from the sea and salt air. She worked in a library, dusting the books, keeping them from getting mixed up, and helping people find the ones they wanted. Some of those books were stories about faraway places. People didn't call her Little Alice anymore. They called her Mrs. Rumphius now. And sometimes, when it was very snowy in the middle of the winter, my great aunt Alice would go to the conservatory in the middle of the park. And when she stepped inside on a cold, snowy day, the warm, moist air wrapped itself around her and the sweet smell of jasmine filled her nose. This is almost like a tropical island, thought Miss Rumphius, but not quite. So Mrs. Rumphius went to a real tropical island where people kept cockatoos and monkeys as pets. She walked on long beaches and picked up beautiful shells. One day she met a new friend, the Bapa Raja, king of a fishing village. You must be tired, he said. Come into my house and rest. So Mrs. Rumphius went in and met the Bapa Raja's wife. The Papa Raja and his wife fetched green coconuts to drink from, and before she left, the Papa Raja gave her a beautiful mother-of-pearl shell on which he had painted a bird of paradise, and the words, You will always remain in my heart, my friend. And you will always remain in my heart, my friend, said Mrs. Rumphius. My great aunt Alice had many adventures, up snowy mountains, and riding camels. She went through jungles and across deserts and she saw lions playing and kangaroos jumping and everywhere she made friends that she would never forget. Finally, when she was getting off a camel on one of her adventures, she hurt her back. Ouch! Ooh, what a foolish thing to do, said Miss Rumphius. Well, I have certainly seen a lot of faraway places. Maybe it's time for me to find my place to rest by the sea. And it was, so she did. And from the porch of her new house, Mrs. Rumphius could watch the sun come up each morning and watch it cross the sky and sparkle on the water and set in glory in the evening. She started a little garden among the rocks that surrounded her house and planted a few flower seeds in the stony ground. Mrs. Rumphius was almost perfectly happy. Oh, but there's still one last thing that I have to do she said, I have to do something to make the world more beautiful. But what could it be? The world is already pretty nice, she thought, looking out over the ocean. 
but the next spring, Mrs. Romphius was not very well at all. Her back was bothering her a lot, and she got sick, and she had to stay in bed most of the time. The flowers she had planted the summer before had come up and bloomed in spite of the stony ground, and she could see them from her bedroom window, blue and purple and rose-colored. Ah, lupin flowers, said Mrs. Rumphius with satisfaction. I have always loved the lupins the best. I wish I could plant more seeds this summer so that I could have more flowers next year. But her back hurt too much and she could not get out of bed. So winter came and passed. And after the hard winter, spring came again. Mrs. Rumphius was feeling much better by spring. Now she could take walks again. One afternoon, she started to go up and over the hill where she had not been in a long time. <gasps> I don't believe it, she cried when she got to the top, for there, on the other side of the hill, was a large patch of blue and purple and rose-colored lupins. It was the wind that planted these, she said as she knelt in delight. The wind brought seeds from my garden to here, and the birds must have helped too. And then, Mrs. Rumphius had a wonderful idea. She hurried home and got out her seed catalog and ordered as many, uh, she ordered five bushels, which is a lot of big bags of lupin seeds. And all that summer long, Mrs. Rumphius walked around with her pockets full of lupin seeds. She wandered over the fields and the headlands throwing lupin seeds. She scattered them along the highways and down the country lanes. She flung handfuls of them around the schoolhouse and along the back of the church, and she tossed them in the hollows and along stone walls. Her back did not hurt her anymore. Now some people were calling her that crazy old lady. But the next spring, everyone understood what she'd been doing. For the lupins sprung up everywhere, Fields and hillsides were covered with blue and purple and rose-colored lupin flowers. They bloomed along the highways and down the lanes. Bright patches lay along the schoolhouse and the back of the church. Down in the hollows and along the stone walls grew all of the beautiful flowers. Mrs. Lupin, or Mrs. Rumphius had done the third and most difficult thing of all, made the world more beautiful. My great aunt Alice, Mrs. Rumphius, is very old now. Her hair is very white. Every year there are more and more lupins. Now everyone calls her the lupin lady. Sometimes my friends will stand with me outside her gate. Curious to see the old, old lady who planted all the fields of lupins. When she invites us in, they come in slowly, carefully. They think she is the oldest woman in the world. Often she tells us her stories and adventures of faraway places. When I grow up, I tell her, I too will go to faraway places and then come home to live by the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, says my aunt, but there is a third thing you must do. What's that? I ask. You must do something to make the world more beautiful. All right, I say, but I don't know yet what that will be. And everyone, everyone gets to decide how are they going to use their life to make the world more beautiful. I can decide and you can decide. Everyone gets to make the world more beautiful. Thanks for listening.